control of us. Lord, we come today because we want to see you. And we want to see you face to face. So Father, allow your manservant to to rest in your bosom this morning. Allow your manservant to be able to declare your word with clarity and, and understanding that, that the man or the woman that has found themselves in a spirit of complacency, that they will find themselves trying and doing more to seek you. So Father, we give you our ears in this place this morning. But better than that, God, we give you our hearts. So God, we ask you that you receive our heart today. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my spirit be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. And we rest on that today. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let every heart say amen. 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 Uh, with your Holy Ghost feel self, come on, give God some, some praise. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Jesus look good on you. Jesus good on you. Amen. And those of you who have your Bibles, uh, go ahead and uh, let's go into the, the Old Testament, the gospel according to Luke. The gospel according to Luke, the 19th verse. Amen. The 19th chapter. And we're going to start from verse 1 through verse 10. Those who got good legs. and Amen. Please stand on your feet and give God some reverence. I went to a church and I said that once and there was a guy, he had two false legs. And I said, those who have two good legs stand on your feet. He stood up because he was able to stand to give reverence to God. Amen. Sometimes we have to fight our way through that pain. We fight uh, to, just to give reverence to God. Sometimes you have to go to the extreme to make sure that God get what is due unto him. Here, the 19th chapter, verse 1 through 10. And Jesus entered, in, entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Somebody say he was rich. He was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little in stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all mumbled, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him 
4, 4. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. So as much as also is a son of Abraham. Verse 10. For the son of man. For the son of man is come to seek and to save which is lost. I want to talk to y'all just briefly. Won't hold you long. Today, salvation came to my house. Today, salvation came to my house. I don't know about you, but I remember when salvation came to my house. But I also remember times when salvation seemed to have left my house. Y'all ain't talking to me, are you? But here in this text, my brothers and my sisters, you, you find a man by the name of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a professional tax collector. He was good at what he did. I mean, he was real good because in order to take on the title as a chief tax collector, that means you had to become real good at what you're doing. Zacchaeus, uh, uh, he was employed by the Romans to collect taxes from people. Zacchaeus would sit at the gates at the pole like when you're going down to Florida and you got to go through the, the, the booth to pay some money just to enter into the state. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But um, you know, even when we was going into the state, even when we was coming out of the state of Florida, we still had to pay a toll. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So Zacchaeus, he had learned a good trait. He had learned how to make a lot of money for the, for the Roman emperor. He had learned how uh, to, to, to even make a lot of money for himself. Because every time you see Zacchaeus, he was asking for your taxes. Uh, just like the United States, if you don't pay your taxes, they'll take your check from you. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me today. Yes, Zacchaeus became real good at he, what he was doing. Just like today in the jobs that we hold, we come real good at what we do. We, come, we become real good at becoming lawyers and, and doctors and scientists and engineers. We become real good at the necessities that God has provided for us over and over again. But somehow we forget to tell God, thank you for what he has given unto us. Zacchaeus, I'm sure Zacchaeus uh, uh, came in counter with blind Bartimaeus. You know the story. Blind Bartimaeus was a beggar and he had his bucket out uh, asking for alms. And I'm sure as bold as Zacchaeus was, he didn't have no problem in asking blind Bartimaeus for his taxes. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm, I'm sure that woman who had the issue of blood, the Bible says she was a well-to-do woman. She spent her money, but I'm sure she too had to pay some taxes. I'm sure Zacchaeus encountered her. I'm sure that man that probably uh, had lost his mind at the grave site. When Jesus was coming in the city, healing the sick and restoring those that were possessed with demons. I'm sure Zacchaeus had an encounter with him because Zacchaeus had became a professional thief. He became a professional liar. He, he became a, a professional robber of 
people. His, his main responsibility, mother, was just to collect taxes for the Roman emperor, but Zacchaeus saw a way to make a little extra for himself. Nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, that ain't you, is it? I hope not. But here, Zacchaeus, he, he became good at what he was doing. My brothers and my sister, you too, and I have became real good at what we do. But let me tell you what happened when you become so good at what you do and to the point that you lose focus from God. I mean, that thing that you are so good at, it can possibly not saying that everybody uh, is in this category but sometimes that thing that you worship more than God will pull you away from God and what happens in that thing that pulls you away from God it, it puts you in a spirit of complacency hello somebody look at your neighbor say neighbor you ain't been there before have you the spirit of complacency, it, 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 it causes you to do some things that you would normally not do. The spirit of complacency. Complacency come from having a sense of comfort. Hello, somebody. You get comfortable in what you do. So here, Zacchaeus was comfortable at robbing people. Uh, yeah, he was comfortable at taking from the poor. He was comfortable at becoming a rich man. Probably had him a lakeside, lakeside uh, property on, on the beach somewhere. Uh, had a whole lot of money, but uh, complacency might as well be considered sin. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. But, but, but he heard that Jesus was passing by. I'm talking about a man that has a spirit of complacency. You know some people like that, they have a complacency spirit. They, they, they over here today. And then they might be somewhere else tomorrow and then to the next day they all the way over here but they got a spirit of complacency I'm, they all the way over here sitting next to sister here and getting all in her business are you hearing what i'm saying a spirit of complacency a spirit of complacency will keep you from coming to church because you feel like you already got it together. The spirit of complacency. Can I help you with that? The spirit of complacency is nothing but sin. I mean, you didn't convince yourself that whatever you are doing, it's okay. But you are not looking at the long term of your complacency. See, see, Jesus too had to pay taxes. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Uh, Peter carried the money change, you know. Peter carried the taxes in his pocket, but even Peter found a way how to rob God. And he was walking with him. Y'all ain't talking to me today. But here you have this man. I don't know about y'all, but I, my wife saw me uh, climb on top of the house one day and I didn't have a ladder. I just backed my truck up and, and, and I pulled myself up, got up on the roof and I looked down and I said, I'm going to get down. <laughs> you, you hear what I'm saying? The spirit of complacency tells me I can do it. Oh, Y'all missed that. <laughs> but deep down on the inside of me, I know I can't do it. 
like I used to. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says that Zacchaeus was a short man. And I'm a you, Chris. Because there was a crowd of people passing by. And Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. But he couldn't see it because everybody that was in front of him was too tall. And, and when he tried to look through the cracks, and that was he couldn't look through the cracks because everybody was taller than him. So that Zacchaeus, he came up with an ordinary plan. He came up with a plan that most of us won't go to the extreme to see Jesus. The Bible says that he climbed up a sycamore tree. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, you know, that's what happened to me. I, I, I was, I, you know, the roof had a hole in it. And, and, and in order for the house to stay dry on the inside, I was willing to go to the extreme, watch this, for stuff. Don't miss, somebody missed that system. Because we'll go to the extreme for stuff. But when it comes to Jesus, we miss the mark. So, so God, God kids, he gets up in the sycamore tree. And he plans out when Jesus was going to reach him. So he go ahead. And when Jesus finally gets to that place where Zacchaeus is, Zacchaeus looks down at Jesus and Jesus looks up at Zacchaeus. Normally, we are to look up to him. But here you have a man looking down to Jesus. But it doesn't matter whether you look up or you look down as long as you find Jesus for yourself I, I'm just saying I'm just saying what I'm saying but here I'm almost done here but here the Bible says verse 9 and Jesus said unto him this day he, he didn't say tomorrow because tomorrow has not yet come are y'all hearing what I'm saying somebody said this day he ain't saying uh, when you get home and you think about it, but he says this day. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? He, he says, he said this day. Y'all read it? Are we still? Y'all don't close your Bible too quick. Because, you know, that, that's what happens to us. We come to church and we wait for the word and we close the Bible and we go home and we don't take Jesus with us. Look at your neighbor and you tell your neighbor, look him straight in the face and say, this day, my house shall receive salvation. Let me show you what's going to happen when you uh, allow the salvation of the Lord to come in your house. There are going to be some people around you. They're going to complain about what you have received. They're going to complain about your Jesus and why your Jesus come and sit among you. Because they was complaining. Because Jesus is entertaining sinners. All of us have sinned. And all of us have fallen short. Just because you made a little bitty sin. And your sin wasn't as big as this person's sin. All sin stinks in the nostrils of God. Jesus says, Jesus says, today salvation comes into your house. The word of God says, as a Christian, one who is seeking to know God, he emulates who God is. Amen. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor? Well, the Bible says that when Zacchaeus found God, it changed his heart. He became 
A giver. Not a taker. He, he, he became alive. And now he's not dead. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Be because look, watch this. This is what the people, they thought of this man. They thought that he was the lowest of low. Amen. S Sister Passy, come here. You, you and Sister Thomas, I think y'all about the shortest in the church. Yeah. I, I, I think, I, just, tell her, I know you got your heels on right now. See, short people, you know, they, 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 you know, when I was coming through high school, we had the stacks. I mean, when other people were stacked, I was still short. You hear what I'm saying? But my brother and my sister, if you really want to see Jesus for yourself, you got to do what Jesus asks you to do. The Bible says, it's in your Bible, it said Jesus told that kid to come on down. <laughs> are are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He, he, he said, if you want salvation in your house, come on down. Zacchaeus didn't see it then, but Zacchaeus invited Jesus in his house. <laughs> and it changed everything in his house. It made Zacchaeus a happy man because the Bible says that when they walked away, Zacchaeus was happy that he was walking with Jesus. Come on down. Come on, stand to your feet. <laughs> Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if you haven't accepted Jesus as your personal Savior and you're still looking for him, today, Come on down. Come on down. Je Jesus can, can break generational curses. Jesus can, can stop us from cheating on our taxes. It's tax season. Some people are doing it. I'm just saying it because I used to be one. Can I be real with you? If you get real with God, he'll get real with you, won't he, brother? Just look back over your life and see those things that you was doing. You remember when you stopped doing them and you gave everything to God? The things you used to do, you don't do no more. And you wonder how you received that blessing and that blessing, and that blessing, and that blessing because you stopped doing them. The word of God said, don't put off today for tomorrow. Because tomorrow might be too late. Tomorrow's not promised. Be like Zacchaeus. Do something you ain't never did before in your life. Do something that is, that will blow your neighbor's mind. That will blow your mama's mind. Because sometimes mama said, that boy ain't say he's still doing everything he want to do. Sometimes uh, your husband would say, she ain't saved, she's still cussing. Or oh, y'all ain't talking. She, she ain't saved, she ain't saved, she running over here to this church. And she running over here to this church, she ain't saved. But Jesus said, if you let me in your house. You know, the strange thing when I was reading that, it, it, didn't, it didn't say what Jesus was actually saying when he got in the man's house. Jesus went in private quarters with this man. And when he came back, back out, the man just started talking, started telling his business about what Jesus had done unto him. I need you to ask your neighbor one important question. I'm going to leave you alone. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Is salvation in your house? Now, don't get this wrong, but I ain't talking about that house you got at your house. 
I ain't talking about that building. I'm talking about this, this, this earthly vessel. Will you let salvation in today? Will you receive salvation in today? Do, do as Jesus command. Come down. God, I receive you today. Come on down. Enter my heart today, God. Come on down. Today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Will you come? Doors of the church is open. There might be one that is seeking a place of rest, a place you can call your home. I believe in my heart that Antioch Missionary Baptist Church is the best church that life can offer because we believe in teaching and preaching nothing but the truth, the whole truth. So help me God. I've gotten to that point in my life where it just doesn't matter. For him I live and for him I die. And because God has placed you under my care. I'm going to do everything I possibly can to keep you from going to hell. That's my responsibility. Repeat this after me, Father God. I realize that I'm a sinner. Please, Lord, forgive me of all of my sins. I ask, you God, I ask you God to renew, to renew the, right the right spirit in me. In me. And, God, and God, the spirit, the spirit of, complacency. of complacency. Help me, God. Help me God. Get, rid Get rid of that spirit. Because that's not who I am. Because God... You said, you said greater, greater is, he is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So God, awaken your spirit in me so I can walk like you, so I can talk like you, so I can live like you, so I can praise like you. So today, God, Salvation, Salvation is in my house, in my house. Today, today. I receive you, I receive you. In, my in my heart. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. let everybody say amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Salvation is in my house. In my house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Is there any, any other announcements that I need to make before we leave? I thank God for you. I know we had uh, somewhat of a long day, but I, I, I charge you to go home.